Now we're going to discuss the special session on sarcopenia and frailty in cirrhosis. My guest today is Dr. Lai from UCSF. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Kevin. So how common is frailty and sarcopenia amongst cirrhotic patients and, and why is this important? It's extremely common. Many studies have shown that frailty is prevalent in at least one in five patients with cirrhosis and functional impairment, perhaps even two to five. And if we're measuring sarcopenia by muscle mass, up to 50% of men and women with cirrhosis have sarcopenia. Frailty and sarcopenia are extremely important to outcomes, including mortality, and predict increased mortality both before and after transplant, as well as hospitalizations, increased risks of infections, and complications both before and after transplant. So how can frailty and sarcopenia be measured? How can we get these, this objective data so we can apply it to our patients to improve outcomes? Yeah, it's a super important question. There are actually a number of really easy to use metrics that can be implemented in the clinical practice in order to measure and capture frailty and sarcopenia. There are metrics that can be done in seconds by the clinician, such as the clinical frailty scale or Karnofsky performance status, but there are other metrics that are more performance-based, such as a liver-specific frailty index that consists of metrics like grip strength and chair stands and balance testing that really get at how well a patient is able to function in their home and in their community. And with respect to sarcopenia, that can be quantitatively measured by CT scans or MRIs that honestly our patients are already getting for their clinical care. It's one additional simple calculation on one of those CT scans that can easily measure this very important factor in our patients. So once we get this data, how can clinicians act on it? What, what can we do to impact our patients? There is so much that can be done with very basic interventions and basic counseling. The first thing is that once it's been identified in our patients, we need to tell them about it. We need to tell them and acknowledge that they have sarcopenia, they have muscle wasting, and that this muscle wasting is going to impact their outcomes while on the wait list or after liver transplantation. The second is that we can intervene by nutritional interventions, very simple, uh, ideas like changing the timing of meals to closer to nighttime, increasing the amount of protein they take in, increasing the amount of the proportion of branch chain amino acids that they take within their sources of protein. Those are really simple nutritional interventions that have been shown in randomized clinical trials to improve their outcomes and their muscle mass. The third intervention that we can do with a diagnosis of frailty and sarcopenia is actually to really encourage effortful exercise. More than just the daily walk, the dog, or the walk around the block, real exercise that, that makes the patient get out of breath, honestly, that they can't have a conversation. Uh, exercise that improves not only aerobic strength, but also muscle strength. Simple exercises, widely available, low cost, that can dramatically improve the quality of life as well as survival in our patients. So what is your hope that folks that come to the session tomorrow come away with? We are going to provide all of that information in order for clinicians to be able to act um, in their clinic with their patients in order to prove their outcomes. We are gonna provide a foundation of what is frailty, what is sarcopenia, and how do we measure it in the clinical practice. And then I'm really excited about the fact that Dr. Sanande and I, my co-chair, um, we designed this program to invite a nutritionist and a physiotherapist in order to provide us with a lot of detailed explanation about how to implement nutritional and physical therapy uh, recommendations for our patients in a very realistic way. Well, this sounds like a really exciting session. Thank you so much for joining us today and telling us all about it. Thank you for having me.